Hi everybody. Before we get started today on the read aloud, I have a short activity for you. I want you to think about everything that you've learned so far about all of the explorers, all of the settlements, all those places those people went, and I'm going to give you a challenge that for two minutes, set a timer, and I'm going to show a timer on the screen, write down everything you can remember. Okay, so I'm going to give you two minutes, write everything you can remember, and then we're going to come back and I'm going to share what I wrote. Ready? Right, Go. Your two minutes are up, and here's what I wrote down. I tried to remember all of the different explorers we've learned about. So I've got Columbus, Juan Ponce de Leon, Hernando de Soto, Francisco de Coronado, and all the places they explored. So Columbus was the first explorer, and he went to those islands, Hispaniola. Juan Ponce de Leon went to Florida. Hernando de Soto went to the Florida and the South, and remember he died in the Mississippi. Francisco de Coronado went to the Southwest, like Arizona, Utah, but he didn't find any gold. And, yep, hello. And the Spanish settlements were all over the place, like California and Florida and everywhere. Okay, so share your notes with people at your family, and if you want, you can even send me a picture. And let's get started with the read aloud today. Okay, so for today's read aloud, we're going to be learning about a new person, a new kind of explorer, and this guy's name was John Cabot. And John Cabot was a little bit different than the other Spanish explorers because he thought that he could find a different way to get to the Indies, to get to India. And so we're going to learn about the, the trip that he took and how he's different than the Spanish conquistadors. Earlier you learned about Christopher Columbus, an Italian explorer who sailed to represent Spain's interests. Today you will learn about John Cabot, another Italian explorer who sailed to represent England's interests. We know very little about the early years of Cabot's life. Historians believe that he was born in Genoa, Italy, the same birthplace of Christopher Columbus. He was also born about the same time as Columbus. In his early years, John Cabot was known by his Italian name, Giovanni Caboto. He lived for many years in the Italian city of Venice, where he worked as a merchant and a sailor. His work in Venice led him to travel along the coasts of countries in the eastern Mediterranean Sea, where he further developed his navigational skills. As a merchant, he began to think that he could obtain spices more quickly and cheaply by finding a westward water route that would take him to the east. In 1493, Cabot and many Europeans learned that Christopher Columbus had an idea very similar to Cabot's, finding a water route to Asia by traveling west. After several years in Venice, Cabot relocated to Bristol, England in 1495. Shortly thereafter, Cabot took steps to embark on a voyage of his own, but one that was slightly different from Columbus's. Cabot had a simple idea. He knew the earth was spherical, that means that it was a big ball. And he knew that one of the properties of a sphere is that the distance around it, it is greatest in the middle, or at its circumference, unless on the top or the bottom. If you apply this basic geometry to the Earth, it means that the circumference of the Earth is greater at the equator, sorry, greater at the equator, and is, ex is significantly less north or south of the equator. Think about a basketball. The circumference of a basketball or the distance around it, if you measure in the very middle, is 30 inches. The distance around the same ball, if you measure at a point closer to the top, is only 15 inches. Cabot thought Columbus had made a strategic mistake in his attempts to sail to the East Indies. Columbus had sailed in the middle latitudes, close to the equator, where the distances would be longest. Cabot thought he could get to the East Indies faster by sailing at a more northerly latitude, where the distances would be shorter. He proposed heading north, hoping to find a northwest passage to Asia and the East Indies. Okay, so on this map we're looking at the North Pole, and this is England, and John Cabot thought that if he sailed near the North Pole around it, he would get to the East Indies, to India. This is India and the East Indies. But what he didn't know, and you can see on the map here, is that all of North America, like Canada and... Yeah, mostly this is Canada up here, and the Arctic was in his way. So was there actually a way for him to cut through here? No, but he didn't know that yet. 
Cabot tried to find sponsors and investors to support his voyage to find the Northwest Passage. In 1496, Henry VII, the King of England, decided to sponsor Cabot. Merchants in Bristol helped support the voyage as well. Henry VII gave Cabot permission to explore and claim unknown lands for England. Cabot was also encouraged to bring any merchandise he acquired back to Bristol, England. Cabot was told he would enjoy a great share of the trade profits if the voyage were successful. Okay, so just so you know, while I'm doing this read aloud, I'm just going to stop here to remind you. You are going to be doing a activity page. Okay, and the activity page is 8.1. And the very first thing that you're supposed to do is find, is to take two vocabulary terms and define the word. That means find the definition, use it in a sentence, and create an illustration. Okay, and we're doing this with the read aloud today, not your reading. So the first word that's going here is going to be navigational and the second word is going to be circumference okay I'm gonna say that again navigational circumference I can even write it down if it lets me but I'll say it again you're gonna take the vocabulary term navigational you're gonna tell me what that word means use it in a sentence and make a picture okay I'm gonna keep going for now Cabot attempted three voyages across the Atlantic. The first voyage attempt from Bristol, England, was not a success. Cabot and his men encountered terrible weather and ran short on supplies. In addition, Cabot had some disagreements with his crew regarding his route. With all the misfortunes that took place at the onset of the voyage, Cabot eventually decided to turn around and sail back to Bristol. Cabot's second voyage was more successful. Again, he had only one ship. It was a small ship, called the Matthew, with a crew of just 18 men. Cabot and his men set sail from Bristol in May of 1497. They sailed past Ireland and across the Atlantic. On June 24th, they sighted land. Historians think Cabot made landfall somewhere in the area of southern Labrador, Newfoundland, or Cape Breton Island in present-day Canada. The, the exact location is not known for certain. Okay, so here's his first voyage where he turned around, and here's his second voyage where he ended up in Canada. Cabot did not spend much time on land. It appears that he and his men got off the ship only once and did not wander inland more than a few hundred feet. They did not encounter any Native Americans, but found signs of their settlement. Cabot claimed the land for England, collected some fresh water, and got back on board his ship. Cabot and his men spent time exploring the coast of the area now known as the Cabot Strait, a channel 60 miles wide between northern Cape Breton Island and the southwestern Newfoundland. On their exploration of the coast, Cabot and his crew discovered some very good fishing grounds. As far as we know, Cabot was the first European to set foot in this part of North America since the Vikings had around the year 1000 CE. Cabot returned to England and went to visit King Henry VI certain that he had explored the northeast coast of Asia. He reported to the king that he discovered wonderful land in a place with a good climate. He mentioned the superb fishing grounds of which England could make great use. This discovery made King Henry the the Seventh very happy because at the time of Cabot's voyage, fish was a very expensive commodity. Seeing that his discoveries were welcomed, Cabot decided to return to the land he explored and sail until he reached another land in Asia, full of spices and riches, the land that today is called Japan. In February 1498, he received permission from King Henry VII to embark on another voyage. Very little is known of this third voyage. Historians don't know for sure, but this voyage probably involved around 200 men and maybe five ships. Unfortunately, when Cabot and his expedition set off, one of his ships became damaged, and the whole fleet had to stop in Ireland due to severe storms. Cabot was supposedly not heard from again, and some historians think he even died on that voyage. Other historians think that he returned from his voyage and lived in London for a short time until approximately 1500. 
There is little evidence about this voyage or the whereabouts of Cabot after the voyage, so historians can't really be sure of its outcome. John Cabot was like Christopher Columbus in many ways. Both men were born in Genoa, Italy. Both men convinced foreign kings to sponsor their explorations. Both men attempted to sail to the East Indies and end up, ended up finding something else altogether. Cabot's explorations proved very important for England. His attempts to find a northwest passage to the East Indies failed, but finding and claiming land on the continent of North America instead were essential for England to later establish British colonies. Okay, so that's it for today. And what you're going to do next is you're going to make sure you finished your activity page. And remember again that you're going to answer the vocabulary term navigational and circumference here. Okay, you're going to tell me what those words mean, use it in a sentence, make a picture. And when you're done with that, you're going to read this chapter in your reader, chapter 8 about John Cabot. You don't have an activity page to do about this reading today, but please still do the reading, okay, because it's important. All right, and that's it for today. Good luck.